All right. We are looking at Chapter 9, Ancient India, Lesson 1. And so here in this lesson, this is the area in Shaded that we're looking at. And this is an actual, it's a, called a subcontinent of Asia. It's part of Asia, but it's a subcontinent because it's such a large um, country. It's also a peninsula because there's water surrounding three sides of it. What separates Asia and India are the Himalaya mountain range, is the Himalaya mountain range. All right, so what I want us to look at in this lesson is the geography of India. So um, in this portion, let me zoom in where you can see a little bit better. So it says India's northern border starts on the southern edge of the continent, the Himalayas, um, continent of Asia. The Himalayas is a mountain range or is a mountain system which blocks off India from the rest of Asia. This makes India a subcontinent. The Ganges and the Indus River are in, the nor are in northern India. The Ganges runs southeast into the Indian Ocean and the Indus flows southwest into the Arabian Sea. Their water comes from the melting snow in the Himalayas. So here in this map that you've done previously, here are your, here's your Himalayas. So the melted snow runs through the Indus River here into the Arabian Sea. Same, it goes through the Ganges and into the Indian Ocean here. That's where its water supply comes from. So it says the Dakan Plateau is south of the river valleys. It's a dry and it's dry and hilly. The coastal areas have plains or flat land that is good for farming. So here, two thirds of India is the Dakan Plateau. So it's a hill that has a flat top on it. Um, on the coast, you have your Western Ghats and your Eastern Ghats. Um, here on the map, I wanted just to make note of that. So it says India's climate or is India's climate or usual weather has monsoons or strong winds. The winter monsoons blows in cold, dry air from the mountains, and the summer brings warm, wet air from the Arabian Sea. Summer monsoons bring the rainy season. If the rain, if the rain comes in time, the crops will be good. If the rains are late. Then they may be. Then there may be a drought or a long dry periods that can ruin crops. So, hopefully, you know, India. Um, so the in the winter you have winter monsoons. It's cold, dry air that blows across India from the Himalayas. In the summer, it blows from the Arabian Sea onto India. And so they they always want it. You know, the monsoons to be on time because it brings on rain and it gives it. Um, for the crops to grow if it's late then there will be a time where there's drought and their crops won't grow and it can be really bad for India. All right so let's look at this. In the text circle the landform that separates India from the rest of Asia that would be the Himalayas. Um, how do monsoons winds affect life in India? Well the winds bring rain in the summer and that determine whether the crops will grow. All right, so the Indus River Valley Civilization. So that civilization was actually located in this area here. The Indus River flowed through it. And you had two cities. You had Mahindradero and Harappa. And they both had around 35,000 people in these cities. These cities had paved streets that were made of brick. The main city streets, the side streets were not paved. The 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 homes in there were, um, they, were they had flat roofs. They were made of mud bricks. And they had wells in them. They had, um, let's see, courtyards. So that was a yard inside the home that didn't have a roof on it. Indoor bathrooms. They had pipes that took wastewater from the pits outside the city walls. So they had a drainage system. And they also had garbage sheets um, in these homes. So the Indus Valley people left no written records. Experts have studied that they're what was left of the cities to learn about the life that was there. A royal palace and a temple may have been built inside the fortress. So it says list five features of the houses in the Indus Valley cities. So they were made of mud bricks, flat roofs, enclosed courtyards, wells, indoor bathrooms, and you could have also said garbage chutes. All right, and so here in this diagram, or in this table, you can see farmers grew rice, barley, wheat, peas, and cotton. And city dwellers made clay pots, cotton cloth, metal tools, jewelry from shells of ivory and gold, and toys. Most valley, Indus Valley people were farmers. Some were city dwellers, um, but most of them earned their living through farming. All right. Let's see. 
They would trade with other people, like such as Mesopotamians, and they would also sell across the Arabian Sea um, to make trades. So we think that the Indus River Valley Civilization people died from disease and famine. The next group of people to come to this area would be Aryan, were the Aryans. And like I said, this is the area we're talking about here, highlighted this section. Okay. So it says around 1900 BC, the people of the Indus Valley began to leave in their cities. Soon people called the Aryans began settling in the River Valley. The Aryans came, uh, came from Central Asia. They were nomads, so they moved from place to place. They also herded cattle and they searched for their food. They didn't have a similar language, uh, or they spoke a similar language. They didn't all have the same language. This is called a language family. It was called Indo-European. Um, they were good warriors and they were expert horse riders and hunters. So here are some facts about the Aryan civilization here. After, um, after a while, the Aryans stopped living as nomads and they became farmers. Over time, they decided that cattle were sacred. So people in India stopped eating meat from cattle. The Aryans began to make iron tools. With these, they cleared India's forest and they dug canals to bring water to their, crop, to their rivers. Uh, in their fields, um, from their rivers to their fields, excuse me. This northern India, this made the Ganges River Valley good for growing crops. Farmers in the valley, in the valleys, farmers grew rice. In the south, they grew spices and pepper, ginger, and cinnamon. The early Aryans did not write things down. Um, they were nomads. When they became farmers, they developed a written language called a Sanskrit. Using a Sanskrit, they wrote down sales and trade information. They also wrote down songs, sales and um, song stories and poems and prayers in a sacred book called the Vedas. The Aryans lived in groups which were ruled by a, ra a Raha or a prince. Rahas often fought with each other over treasure and cattle. So let's see. It says the Aryans were different. Were a different group of people. Um, in what way were they alike? Well, they had a similar language, which was Indo-European, and this is called a language family. So they, they spoke a similar languages. What two activities did the Aryans stop after moving into the Indus River Valley? They stopped living as nomads, and they stopped eating cattle uh, for meat. Where did the Aryan, why did the Aryans develop a written language? To record sales and trade information. They also wrote down poems and stories and songs and prayers. How did the Aryans change their way of life after they settled in India? Well, we know they became farmers and they changed the way they lived by, uh, you know, writing things down, uh, settling in one place, growing food, those types of things. Okay. Let's look at the last page here. So a caste system is like a social class that they live in. We've, in each of our civilizations that we've talked about, we've always talked about a social class. And India has a social class which is called a caste system. So it says, ancient Indian India society. Ancient India society was grouped into four classes called a varnas. So these, these four uh, classes were called a varnas. This is a caste system. And the top varnas were your Brahmins, and these were your priests. And the the next varna was your um, sistras, and they were your warriors and like your government officials, some of your rulers. They were the second. They were right here underneath the Brahmins, and they ran the government and the army. After the um, Kishtrites came the Vasya, the Vasa. Vasyas, I think is how you say that, or common people. They were your farmers, your craftspeople, and your merchants. Okay. Then came your Sundras. This was your largest class, and they were the lower class of workers, and they were servants who had few rights. Most Indians were Sundras. The four bonuses gradually divided into thousands of smaller groups called jati so these would divide into even smaller groups called jati and a person who was born in one jati could never move into another the jati system had rules for almost every part of life including marriage work and friendship one group was too low to be a part of the jati system the untouchables untouchables did work considered too dirty for jati members so such as collecting trash most indians thought untouchables were unclean as a result untouchables were made to live apart from everyone else so they couldn't live around this group these groups of people okay let's see 
Grandparents, parents, and children all live together with the oldest man in charge. So if your great-grandfather was st still alive, then he would be the one in charge. This is called extended fam family, extended or enlarged family. Men, uh, men had many more rights than women. Only men went to school or could become priests when they were young. When they were young, it says some boys studied with a guru, that's a teacher. Older boys went to schools in the cities, and parents chose marriage partners for their children, and divorce was not allowed. So you didn't have a choice that you could marry, and you couldn't get a divorce either. So in this, it says, in the text, circle the names of the four varnaces. This is part of your caste system, okay? And these are your four varnaces that were... Not um, that was not part of the Jati system. Underline the types of people that belonged in each. So you have your Brahmins, who were your priests, your Kastrites, which were your warriors, or I'm sorry, your Sustrites, which were your warriors and your government officials, um, Vaisyas, or common people. And your largest group were your Sundras, and they were your lower class, and there were more, um, most Indians were Sundras. The people that were not part of the Jati were your untouchables, okay? What was, a family, what was family life like in ancient India? Well, you lived with your extended family. The oldest male was in charge. Boys were educated by a guru. Girls were not educated. Parents chose who their children would marry, and divorce was not allowed. So that was about family life in ancient India. All right, so we're going to determine whether this is the Indus River Valley Civilization people or the Aryan Civilization people or both. Develop the Varna system. Well, that would be your Aryan Civilization that developed that system we just talked about. Use mud bricks to make buildings. Well, that would be your Indus River Valley people uh, that made these homes. They grew rice, wheat, and barley. That would be both. And they used a Sanskrit uh, language. That would be your Aryans. And built large cities with paved streets. That would be your Indus River Valley people. So that is lesson one. So hopefully you've checked your work. If you need to pause the video at any time, you can. If you have any questions, send me an email. Pause the video, like I said, when you need to. Uh, thank you for listening. Y'all have a good rest of your day.